Following clues and notes left behind by Kelso, we continue on our hunt to find out what she's been up to in New York. However, as we aren't the only ones following her, we need to catch up with her quick. Also, it's looking like Kina was onto something. Kelso was spotted at the waterfront control point in the financial district. Well defended by the cleaners, the agents took their time methodically taking down all of the guards holding the compound. Many would be heard over the comms, stating that they have found more evidence of Kelso in the district, and the agents need to continue clearing out the hostile presence. Secure the area and see if you can find any leads on what she was doing there. Agents would quickly be alerted to a couple of high-value targets that were last spotted on Stone Street. They waste no time making their way over there. After fighting across a few city blocks and then across a couple of rooftops, the HVTs would be hunted down and eliminated. From here, many suggest another location in the district. Heading over to the Celebration Hotel control point, they find it once again completely surrounded by cleaner forces. While the agents perhaps showed their lack of experience in this location of the city, leading up to a couple of heart-stopping moments, they were successful in cleansing the hotel of the occupying forces. Kelso is the last person who would choose to hang out in the financial district. She hates rich people. The agents would continue following hostile leads throughout the district, removing all high-value targets they came across, until Isaac suddenly detected something at the Federal Reserve. Black Tusk Special Unit, Whiskey One, led by Hurricane Clark, are apparently closing in on Kelso. Locating him and backing his troops into the corner of the reserve, the agents took no time at all in mowing down the leader and discovering another note from Kelso that had been left behind. It wasn't exactly a clean fight, but we'll just call it a more time-efficient way of getting back to Haven. I knew Cassandra wasn't a traitor. I wish she could have told me what she was up to, but I get it now. I understand why she couldn't tell me, why she couldn't tell anyone. She needed to get the key first. We have the key. Find me. I have so much to tell you. But this time, there was also a video recording discovered and could be accessed back in Haven. and my rogues have been 
targeting the division. This couldn't be further from the truth, Faye. If you really want to stop the hunters, I can stop them. Well, I can't. But if we work together, we might stand a chance. What the fuck? Present detected. Two-factor authentication required. This recording shows Anna leading Kelso to a certain area of the city in New York. This season has led to a number of questions we've been trying to figure out along the way. Like, whose watch is Kelso using? Who is Cassandra? Who is following Kelso? What is in the box? And what was Keena's potential solution for the hunters? This single cutscene has answered a couple of these questions straight away, and further confirms that Keena was in fact working against the much larger issue playing out in the background. Natalia and the Black Tusk, and Calvin McManus and his hunters. Before I get further into this, I want to play the comms we received during this mission, as some of these clarify a few points that I'd like to discuss. She was hesitant at first, but she liked the mythology and agreed. Great. Happy to hear Cassandra is ready. And you're okay with the compromise? If the only thing I have to give up is two-factor authentication to activate the network, that's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to make. Theo Parnell and Aaron Keener talking about the code name Cassandra. This is funny, I'd previously disregarded the heavy community speculation around the mythology of the name, yet here it is being called out within the game comms, so my bad. It actually makes complete sense for Faye to have this code name associated with her. I guess I just hadn't really taken it seriously that Cassandra was in fact being used as a codename. Cassandra is a name of Greek origin, meaning shining upon man, a name shared with a Trojan princess who was given the gift of prophecies by Apollo, but cursed so no one would believe her. Although they never heeded her warnings, Cassandra's insight into the future allowed her to predict the Trojan War. Given what Faye was doing before we took her out, I couldn't think of a better codename. She knew what was playing out behind the scenes, but she couldn't say anything. She needed the cover of appearing like a defected rogue agent in order to gain the trust behind enemy lines and work towards hunting out a weakness that could take them down. But what was their plan? I believe it was far more than her just taking out President Ellis. Was it just to gain the trust of Barden Schaefer? No, I think there's more to this. Also, at the end there, there was talk about her giving up the two-factor authentication in order to unlock the network. Why would Faye want this? And does this have anything to do with the box that zapped Kelso at the end of the cutscene? Two-factor authentication by definition is a security process which users provide two different authentication factors to verify themselves. Obviously by using Faye's watch, Kelso wasn't able to provide a second authentication to access the box. Actually, that could be it. Going back a couple of steps, Faye wanted the two-step authentication removed from unlocking the network as a backup plan. If Faye was unsuccessful in her mission, she knew the agents would recover her watch, especially Kelso. Loosening up the security on her watch meant that Kelso was able to pick it up and finish Faye's mission, which is essentially where this whole season has been heading. Well, you've certainly gotten their attention now. That was always the plan. And how exactly do I fit into your little plan? You're the honeypot. And what bear do you think I can trap? A cute little one-eyed koala. You're kidding, right? Not at all. That's not going to go over well with the ex. Which ex? Xander. She, um... She hates your little one-eyed koala. Never pictured you with the JTF. But I suppose people can always surprise you. She's, um... She's with the True Sons now. Oh, well, that does create some complications. And opportunities. If everything goes to plan, we may need her help. We can't do this without Faye. I know. So, you in? Honey? As long as you promise never to call me that again, sure. Why the hell not? This conversation takes place after Keena and his rogues attacked City Hall, before Kelso and the DC agents arrived in New York. Here, Keena's essentially pimping out Bridget Viper Douglas to bring the one-eyed koala, aka Fei Lau, aka Cassandra, on board with their mission. Keena specifically states that they can't do this without Fei. I wonder why this is. What is it about Faye that is so valuable to this mission? Initial 
contact made. How'd it go? Koala has Alicia in custody, so not great. Well, at least you got away. More than I can say for Javier. What happened to Kajika? Kelso and her agents from D.C. They are better than I expected. Well, she is relentless. Am I targeting the wrong ally? No. Kelso. She was CIA. Nat would never. Faye is the right choice. Here, Viper is updating Kina on the contact she has made with Faye. This is around the time that Kelso and the DC agents are storming southern Manhattan and taking out Kina's agents. Kina underestimated them. Him querying whether they had targeted the right ally is interesting. While Viper states that Kelso wouldn't have been suitable due to her personality and background, it still paints the picture of what they were looking for. We need to remember that Bridget Douglas at this time was never activated as an agent and was actually working with the Black Tusk. So Douglas knows what Natalia is looking for, and Faye is still a better candidate to infiltrate their ranks. Working with Viper, Kina assisted in planting Faye within the Black Tusk. But what is it that Faye can do that Viper couldn't? Back to the video footage. Anna is leading Kelso to the room where she would find the echo left behind by Kina, intended for Faye. But as soon as she enters the room, we see the warning pop up in the top right corner. So what this says to me is that the person who is stalking Kelso is still there. Remember the last time we saw this at the start of the season in Haven? I still have no clue who this could be, but I certainly don't think it's Cassandra now. So I guess the big question now, other than obviously where is Kelso, is what did Kina have planned to beat Kel's hunters? Is that what's in the box? Does this have anything to do with his eclipse virus? Or has he come up with something less detrimental to the wider public? Perhaps something regarding a mobile SHD server, or something similar to Myra's countermeasure program to shut down any technological advantage they have. Whatever it is, we need to find Kelso first, and then figure out how to get into that box. I wonder if the figure stalking Kelso is actually waiting for us to join up with her, where together we could open the box. Perhaps our watch, Kina's old watch, is the answer. It's looking very much like Kina and Faye never were able to take down the hunters. The stalker could even be a hunter, and is just waiting for us to claim the prize before springing an attack and grabbing what could ultimately be the downfall of the hunter program. Show Erin your bracelet. White gold or silver? Titanium. Very nice. A merit original? Custom made cuff. So my friend here can hide that ugly ass watch for formal events. Show him, Bridge. Mac, you're drunk. I'm tipsy. Don't be shy. If you show him yours, maybe he'll show you his. It's fine. You don't have to. Don't be shy now. You are flashing yours all over the bar. See, look, it's the same watch. Your turn, Bridge. Fine. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Pretty sure I've been a member longer than you have, Keener. And here we are back at the benefit party, where Mackenzie Merritt has now consumed a little too much alcohol and is now making an absolute ass of herself. We've all been there. Obviously they were breaking the super secret division agent protocol, but I'm sure they would have found out eventually. I'm still expecting the storyline to lead us down to the moment where Keener suddenly saw the light around what Natalia and Kelvin are actually doing. But for now, I'm just happy hearing more from and about one of my favourite characters in the franchise. I'm a little bit confused about one thing. Kina talks to Faye in the Echo about the Hunters and how much he knows about them, but also implying that Faye knew a hell of a lot about them too. We only learnt of this stuff presumably a year after this Echo was dropped for Faye. Why didn't she say anything to us? Or is this another one of those situations where she knew but couldn't say? due to the risk of blowing her cover before moving into the Black Tusk ranks. How long had she been planning this? Otherwise, what a huge week for Intel. I'm probably going to go away and think about this and come up with a whole bunch of other theories around some of what we've seen here, but I'm already pretty late with this video. I may have a follow-up soon when I've had a chance to break it down some more. A special shout out to all of the channel members, Patreon subscribers, and also some of the people who have been buying some of the merchandise lately. I didn't really expect to sell many, and it was mostly just intended as an easy way to make some up for myself. I really need to chuck a Kino was right shirt on there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. And extremis mollus, extrema remedia.